Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, the president has said many filling stations should be converted to CNG outlets. President Bola Tinubu has urged the conversion of filling stations to compressed natural gas CNG outlets as part of Nigeria's shift to cleaner energy. Minister of State for Petroleum Ekperipe Ekpo emphasized that CNG is safer, cheaper, and more environmentally friendly, with significant savings compared to traditional fuel. The government plans to improve infrastructure for gas distribution and aims to lower conversion costs as private investors become more involved in the CNG project. Joining us to discuss this is a public affairs analyst. We have Nick Aguli. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, good morning, and good morning to our viewers globally. Good morning. Okay, so we're talking adoption of CNG, um, you know, into our nation, and especially with the removal of fuel subsidy, we've seen the petrol price, you know, gets so high, as high as 1,000, 1,200 in some states right now. And this is a commodity that was just 186 naira about 16 months ago. So with that um, being our new normal, um, obviously people need something else that is much more cheaper and that's what cng is about and the president of course has said you know most of the filling stations now with how expensive petrol is um should maybe be converted to cng um you know stations to ensure that they are converting these vehicles and all but as my question is you know what is the adoption and the public perception of cng in Nigeria because what we are used to, what we've always known, what has always worked has been petrol. And so CNG, of course, is something that is new, something that maybe has not been tried and tested by Nigerians, even though some people are really open to it. But what do you think is the perception of this right now and the adoption of it in Nigeria? Well, thank you very much, Naruma. Thank you. Uh, CNG is a good thing. It's a good thing on various counts. It's already stated that it's cheaper in comparison to petrol or even diesel. That's one thing. The other thing is that it is more environmentally friendly. Mm. Because even though it's gas, it's a fossil fuel, it's a cleaner fossil fuel mm. compared to the dirtier fuels of uh, petrol and diesel. And now in Nigeria, we missed the boat in the sense that given that Nigeria is a gas province, meaning we have more gas, mm. over 200 trillion standard cubic feet of gas has been discovered already mm. in the ground in Nigeria. We could have adopted the CNG perhaps 20, 30 years ago, meaning we will be running our vehicles on gas and exporting all of the crude oil that we we, 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 we are producing because uh, we have so much gas. Mm. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's better late than never. Now, as they say, adversity is the mother of inventions. So uh, the cost of uh, petrol and diesel now, both of them topping the 1,000 mark, heading to the 1,200 mm. uh, or even more, depending on where you are in Nigeria, has now forced our hands to turn to CNG. But the adoption of CNG cannot just happen in a GP. It cannot happen overnight. Mm. For instance, as I can tell you that, uh, we run a transport company and we converted one of our buses to CNG just as a trial so that we can compare it to petrol. In terms of cost, it was immediate. I mean, a CNG of about 4,000 naira could go for as far as 180 kilometers. Mm. And the equivalent of that in petrol, if it is as of today, will be probably 40 to 50,000. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, so, so the, 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 the cost savings are humongous. There's no doubt about that. But the problem is, uh, there's only one place in Abuja where we can refill the CNG, which is on Airport Road. And uh, when we take that bus, uh, by the time it gets to Masarawa State, the CNG is already finished. And there is no filling point all along from 
when we leave uh, federal capital running to Makodi and Benue State, there's no filling point on the way. So the infrastructure must be developed to be able to cascade CNG all over the country. It's not just a question of, say, let us convert to CNG. Number one, the cost of conversion is humongous. Hmm. I know that for this particular bus we converted the CNG, it cost us about 500,000 naira to do it. I hear that it's even more expensive now. Hmm. You know, so how many Nigerians can actually now cough out like that kind of money to convert their vehicles? Hmm. And then when you convert, where are the filling points? So if the president says, oh, petrol station should convert themselves to CNG, that is not going to happen in a jiffy. You know, petrol station will need capital to be able to do that. Mm. Because I have made some research on this because to, uh, we were a funding group where we were trying to actually set up a CNG conversion and filling station. And uh, the cost were hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to be able to set up a filling station. You know, include the fact that you have to have specialized vehicles that will go and get the steel where it is being produced and bring it to your filling station. You know, so the government have now think about how are they going to support the conversion of this petrol station to CNG. It's not just about making a policy statement. The policy statement has to be followed up with concrete action that can make it happen. Right. You know, because if there are no conversion centers and the conversion is expensive, and if there are no filling points, then this uh, policy is already dead on arrival. Mm. Okay, so, I mean, I, I love your opening statement. I love the fact that you talked about how we have so much gas in Nigeria. And in fact, the community I'm from in Delta State, um, that's where Nigerian Gas Company is. We know that we have so much. And of course, we should be exploring that, especially if it's a cheaper and cleaner energy. I mean, we just went to COP28. COP29 is around the corner. Our carbon footprint would definitely have to try to reduce that but talking about how feasible this is this is a statement from the president you know most filling stations should be converted to um, CNG stations and a problem that you you've said we have is there are not enough filling points especially if you've even converted and you've bought from somewhere before that you see the next one all of the gas is gone how do you think the government needs to uh, you know intervene in this maybe do we need like some form of investment from the government because if they're the ones who increase the petrol price like what, what we've seen right now then of course there should be other measures to say you know what this can cushion the effect and if we're trying to move to this cleaner energy um we can do this for the people so how do you think the government needs to intervene to ensure that this can be cheaper for people especially the conversion because you've said it costs over five hundred thousand naira. I'm not sure a lot of people who ha even have that money sitting in their accounts to say, I want to convert my vehicle to CNG. So if the government intervenes with some form of investment, do you think that can help with the cost of conversion? And then gas has, in has been increased a little bit. I think now it's about 1,500 per, per kg. Do you think, you know, that's another thing we need to look at, especially when we're talking cost implication to all of this. It will be cheaper in the long run, but as of right now, what can the government do to intervene? vein into the situation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I answer your question, uh, based on what you said, uh, it means I have been to your community because I have been oh. to that NGC oh, and really? talked to several times. The chief oh. president has been to the Warren family. Yes, yes. Very worried. That's fantastic. So I uh, have been to your community as you see. <laughs> yes. So, so yes. So the government has a lot to do. Uh, mm. uh, uh, the government has started something. There is something that is called Presidential Initiative on CNG, okay. PRCNG. Mm. And this uh, initiative has, uh, I, I have studied what they are doing, because like I said, we have formed a group that is trying to, to set up a conversion and filling uh, station for CNG. So I have also interfaced with the PRCNG. And what the government is doing is that the government is working with uh, partners, that is those who already have conversion centers. Mm. If you have a conversion center, the government, uh, after they register your vehicle, they send your vehicle to that conversion center, and it gets converted free of charge. Uh, I'm aware of that. 
and uh, then you now have to find a way to do your your feeling. Uh, but the, the effort is is uh, small, is not uh, big enough because mm -hmm. we're talking about millions of, of cars in Nigeria. So what government needs to do is that government needs to expand that program to partner with uh, more CNG conversion centers who can be converting vehicles in their hundreds, you know, uh, or thousands all across the nation every day. That's the only way that uh, this thing will be uh, implemented in, in a way that the impact um, on Nigeria's uh, fuel consumption. Mm. And also, uh, government need to also consider working with uh, development financial institutions. Uh, we have them, uh, the Bank of Industry, um, and all of that in Nigeria, where uh, people can take loans, even if it means interest-free loans or loans at single digit where they will be able to also convert their vehicles because the saving is they will make take over time from spending less on petrol they can use that to then pay off the loans and that way more people will have access to finance to be able to convert their vehicles and the government needs to extend uh, all sort of support to those who intend to set up uh, filling stations, CNG filling stations, mm. because the more vehicles are being converted, the more they need for filling stations. But you know, there is also something again. Uh, like, uh, government had pushed for people to stop using firewood yeah. and cut over to cooking gas. Mm. And initially, cooking gas was very cheap, mm. which made it very okay that you can uh, convert to cooking gas or LPG, the Kufa petroleum gas mm -hmm. as it is technically called. But now, as more and more people started to use cooking gas, the price of cooking gas has started to rise. Why? Because the supply of cooking mm -hmm. gas in the market mm -hmm. is not rising in line or in tandem with the demand. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, the simple law of demand and supply means if there is no demand and supply, the price will go up. Hmm. So we have to avoid that in CNG as well. Otherwise, if we don't do, if we don't learn our lessons, the price of CNG will also continue going up as more and more people are demanding it and there is no supply in the market. So government has to look at the supply for CNG. Hmm. And that is where the oil companies come in. Hmm. Those oil companies operating in the major data, the government has to tell them that production of CNG is not a must for you to keep your license to operate. Mm. You must get CNG and put it in the Nigerian market. Mm. How to say that? There was a recent incident in, uh, they say in Benin. Yeah, I was, just, so I was even just that, about to say that. that the case. I was just about uh, to say yeah, that as, uh, it's, as it's, my last it's, question. It's, so I was just about to even highlight that as my last question, where there was an explosion in Edo State. And um, I think the person had gone to a roadside um, vendor to convert it. So, of course, you know, speaking about investing, if we can invest into, um, you know, these conversion centers, accredited conversion centers, then that would definitely ensure the safety for people but finally because we have to go I was going to ask how do you think this transition period should work and what do you think the government needs to do better especially if we're moving away from traditional fuel yeah before I just uh, conclude on the transition process I want mm -hmm. to add to what you have said because the point you have raised is very important yeah the safety about the safety of mm -hmm. CNG I want mm -hmm. all Nigerians to know that this thing is called CNG, meaning it is compressed natural gas. It's natural gas. Mm. It's not a petroleum gas, which is the cooking gas, because mm. the cooking gas is called liquefied petroleum gas. Mm. Now, the difference between petroleum gas and natural gas is the pressure. So, the pressure of natural gas is like 300 bars, but the pressure of petroleum gas is like uh, 3 to 5 bars. So, to, for you to put uh, a gas that is natural gas with so much pressure, you need a specialized cylinder. Mm. It cannot just even be that way you use for LPG. No, 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 no. It must be a specialized cylinder. And we hear that this cylinder has to be bulletproof. So, Nigerians, please don't just go and carry this natural gas and put it in a cylinder that is used for petroleum gas. These are two different gases. Mm. The pressure levels are totally different. Mm. Otherwise, what happened in Benin will continue mm. to happen. Thank you for putting in terms that of transition. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the government needs 
Sorry? No, I was saying thank you for clarifying that because I'm sure a lot of people do not have that information and they might just even go and tell their local vendor and say, you know what, please convert mine for me. So it is important that we have that information. Yes, it's very important. CNG is natural gas. Natural gas carries a lot of pressure. Mm. It requires specialized uh, equipment to transport yeah. it. It's not petroleum gas because petroleum gas is just uh, you know three to five bars. It's not. It's not much pressure. Mm. So in terms of uh, transition. Uh, transition, the government needs to step in with more widespread interventions at mm. all levels mm. to help people set up conversion centers and ensure that the conversion centers uh, are using the right kit. Mm. And this is where standard uh, organization of Nigeria will come in mm -hmm. uh, as a regulator. Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority will come in as a as a regulator. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council must come in as a regulator to, to ensure that the, the equipment, especially the cylinders that are being used, are the ones for natural gas, for compressed natural gas, mm -hmm. and not just any type of cylinder so that they can protect Nigeria. And government was also putting a, a lot of efforts to ensure widespread availability of CNG. Otherwise, costs will continue to rise and the benefits will evaporate. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you for um, you know your valuable contributions. And I'm sure a lot of people have been able to learn what um, CNG and LPG is about. And with the conversion, we're just hoping that the government would intervene um, when it comes to investment, especially with these conversion centers, so that we have accredited conversion centers and we can ensure the safety of people who are willing to convert their vehicles from um, traditional fuel right now that we have to CNG. We want to say thank you so much for coming, Nick. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you. Thank you very much and have a good day, woman, and to our viewers. You too, sir. All right, I'm speaking with Nick Aguli, is a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking this, um, the statement by the president that has asked that all filling stations or most filling stations should be converted to CNG filling stations. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rumer Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. <laughs>